everyone. Welcome back to Dubious Knowledge. I'm Jason. What's going on? I'm not GMing tonight. Tonight we are talking about our Lord in Iron. And with me, as always, is Corey. How are you? Hello. I'm doing well, Jason. How are you? I am doing quite well. We sadly don't have Mike tonight. Mike Mike basically got told by his bosses that he has to work tonight. So he is very bummed that he is unable to join us, um, especially because of our guest. He, our, Mike said that our guest is one of his favorite people ever, and he is un, he's bummed that he will be unable to attend. But let's not bury the lead anymore. We're turning. <laughs> To the show is Alex. What's going on? Much like crabs and glitter, you just can't get rid of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are um, we're excited to have you on, and we're excited also to be here. Excited, excited to talk about the literally the most metal god of Galarian. Hell yeah! Quite literally, the most metal god. <clears throat> yeah, so Gorum, Gorum, um, Gorum! Yeah, that yes, guy. That guy. <laughs> that guy there. Hi, Amiri. I didn't realize you joined the show. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's gonna. It's probably not gonna be a long one. Um, there's not a whole lot to Gorum. Just swords, war, blood, and that's about it. But. Let's actually get into it. Corey, you want to take take us through the basics? Absolutely. Uh, as we've already said, we are discussing our Lord in Iron. He is a god of battle above all other pursuits. It's said that he would rust away into nothingness if there was ever a time with no major conflicts to be fought. Known as our Lord in Iron, his faithful believe he is a he is present in every iron weapon of war that is ever forged. His edicts are to attain victory in fair combat, push your limits, wear armor in combat. Uh, his anathema is to kill prisoners or surrendering foes, uh, prevent conflict through negotiation, and win a battle through underhanded tactics or indirect magic. His areas of concern are strength, battle, and weapons. Pre-master, as a deity, he was chaotic neutral and allowed in first edition followers of neutral, chaotic good, chaotic neutral, and chaotic evil alignments. In second edition, pre-master only allowed chaotic neutral and chaotic evil. His chaotic Which good followers I call went bullshit. Bye -bye. I call <laughs> bullshit on that. That's fucking horseshit, and I don't like it. <laughs> uh, his domains in first edition were chaos, destruction, glory, strength, and war, with subdomains of blood, duels, ferocity, protean, rage, resolve, and tactics. Uh, his second edition domains are confidence, destruction, might, and zeal. And oddly, he seems to be one of the few second edition deities that doesn't have any uh, alternative domains. Favored weapon is the greatsword. His worshippers are predominantly soldiers, mercenaries, brigands, half-orcs, orcs, and barbarians. Uh, centers of worship are places where you might find those. Specifically, Bravoy for mercenaries, brigands, and soldiers. Last Wall or the Gravelands now, previously Last Wall, for soldiers. Lands of the Linorn Kings for barbarians. Nermathos for soldiers. Numeria for barbarians. Realm of the Man Lords for barbarians. And the River Kingdoms for mercenaries and brigands. Also, Belkson, I would imagine. It wasn't listed, but I would it, imagine Belkson. I've read it. it and I've read Belkson as one of the places in. There, there's a couple different write-ups on Gora yeah. that's been released. Yeah, why wouldn't Belkson be part of it? Yeah, yeah. 
his holy symbol is a sword in a mountain. Uh, kind of King Arthur style, just jammed into a mountainside. His realm doesn't have a name, but it is just a realm of constant battle, a field of constant battle in Elysium, of all places. Hmm. And that's the basics. Well, you forgot his sacred animal is the rhinoceros. You know, we, we haven't touched sacred animal all that frequently in this show. But you're yeah, right. But, right, but his is the rhino. And you know why? Spikes. <laughs> it's true. Spikes. In armor. Yeah, well, and spiky armor, specifically. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, Gorum is essentially a 90s like version of a superhero. He's like 90s Batman, where it's like, just sharp things. Just spikes. Just sharp spikes. More spikes. Sharp. Sharp and metal sharp. He's like the throne from Game of Thrones if it if it had legs and walked. <laughs> I had that same thought earlier tonight while I was reading Alex's. He's like a sentient throne from Game of Thrones. Well, in this maybe we're skipping ahead a little bit, but it's fun that his any depiction there are really depictions of him in art, like they don't have artists draw him, but if the, he ever is depicted, it's like the throne from Game of Thrones, where it's a series of jagged metal pieces and broken swords and armor that are kind of mishmashed into like a wicker man shape of a basically Sauron looking dude with red eyes. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as I was saying right before we started recording, he's your generic god of war. Every setting, yeah. every mythology needs a generic god of war. Yeah. Usually there's not much to him other than... Well, what I love about this guy, because if we look at our, our other gods of war, we got Tyr from, from Norse mythology, who's all about war, but also like strategic war, like Sun Tzu-style war. And we also got um, Ares, who is like war and like slaughter and like just fucking destruction and shit he's closest to Ares but I feel like Gorum is even simpler than that cause like Gorum isn't even about winning it's not about winning wars it's just about the war itself it's not about why or who or what or where or even who wins I, I think my favorite my favorite bit of the write up on him from Inner Sea Gods was the bit about marriage in his church. Yeah. Yes, yes that was <laughs> really good. It, it mentions that he doesn't really care about marriage. He yeah, doesn't, doesn't give care a one way or the other, doesn't care if you're polyamorous, doesn't care if you're monogamous, doesn't care if you get married or just have a series of one-off flings. All he cares is that you provide future soldiers for the never-ending war. Well, also, he acknowledges that fighting for your family makes better warriors. So mm -hmm. if that makes you stronger, then fucking hell yeah. If that makes yeah. you a better fighter, then sure, procreate. Who cares? It, or it, don't. Or, or don't. Yeah, if, 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 the, you, if, you, if you love somebody and it doesn't matter who that person is or what that person is, when it comes to gender, if, that, if you're going to fight harder for that person, go for it. If that person's going to make you fight more intensely, sure. There are some and he also, he also realizes that sometimes love and romance and attraction are the reason for war. Hello, mm -hmm. Helen of Troy. <laughs> right? <laughs> like... <laughs> and he, because of that, he's okay with love and attraction, because sometimes it makes people mad at each other, and they will fight. Right. Well, what's fun, and this is kind of a running theme with Gorm that we'll see throughout all of his, basically every aspect of his religion, uh, is with marriage, there's like some barbarian tribes that worship Gorm, and they they have like rights of like to marry me you have to beat me in single combat and only then will we be married and blah 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 and Gorm <laughs> is like yeah I, I guess 
Like, he's not like, I mean, sure, that sounds great because you're fighting. Like, I mean, other than that, I don't really care. Like, you don't have to do that, but I mean, I'm glad you are, but also, like, are you fighting? Fight? Question mark? Explanation point? And I like the follow-up to that, is that usually these types of unions turn into Gorum power couples. Yes. Who just yeah. who ravage the countryside because they are unstoppable together. Through Gorum we found love. <laughs> <laughs> and through Gorum we b bring slaughter. And they say you can't be chaotic good Gorum anymore. That's bullshit. <laughs> so... Here's the thing. You can be any alignment and worship any deity. It's he only grants spells to chaotic no, that's evil bullshit. And chaotic I don't give a fuck. That's bullshit as fuck. <laughs> Gorm doesn't uh, give a fuck. I also love it's talking about spells. If you look at like the spells that he grants and his views on magic, he doesn't really care for magic, but he's like if it if it's a buff, I'm cool with it. Like, buff's important. If it takes away from hitting things with metal, I don't like it. But if you can make it hit with metal, but better, then yes. And he dislikes debuffs. Yeah, well, duh. And no one likes a debuff. <laughs> yeah, but he dislikes debuffs cast by his followers. Because well, yeah. it is unfair. Yeah, it's shitty of you. His cleric spells in 2nd edition that he grants extra access to are True Strike, Enlarge, and Weapon Storm. Nice. I love that. <laughs> for, yeah, Gorm's for pretty me, fucking awesome, not gonna lie. I am for a me, big fan. When I was, when I was reading this, the, the vibe I got for me, and I mentioned this before, the, before we started hitting record, is I got crop from yes. Conan the Barbarian. Um, where, where it's just like, in Cimmeria, Krom is is one of the gods, and specifically, Krom says that he bestows on his chosen the power to strive and slay. And to go, go on, survive, and conquer and vanquish. And that is, that's exactly what I got when I was reading Gorm. Like it's go like, forth and conquer. What it, what is it? It's it's to see your enemies driven before you. To uh, what is it? It's the lamentations of their women. Of the women, and what's the other one? I don't remember. Yeah, what but what is it? The yeah. best thing, like that's the perfect example. There's a scene in the first Conan where Arnie is basically crucified. And he sees the bad guys coming to him, and he prays to Krom, or in this case it'd be Gorum, and he's like, Oh, Krom, you have to give me strength to kill my enemies, and if you don't, then to hell with you! And he, like, spits. And it's like, only a god like Krom or Gorum can a prayer end with, and if not, go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's true. Like, imagine if you're like, Dear... Desna, I pray that we can travel good and have good findings and have nice dreams. And if I don't get that, then go fuck yourself. <laughs> I think Desna would go crying like, Soon Ray, you wouldn't believe what the fucking cleric said to me. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's... Gorm's fucking awesome. He... I love him. He, um... Like Alex mentioned, he, he just is basically a walking suit of spiked plate armor with red eyes. Carries a carries a, a great sword with him. So his yeah, so he's he's post Robagug being imprisoned. But he's I I'm he's pre no, because he yeah, he's pre Aridin, because Age of Darkness comes, and then orcs go up and then orcs fight human. And then orc human fight. And Gorum just springs into existence. And Gorum is just of the war made of between that. orcs and humans. And yeah. I love that the orcs, they're all like, yeah, no, he's totally an orc, but he hides his orcness because he doesn't want, he wants to, he wants the humans to follow them because they're all bigoted and they wouldn't follow an orc. And the humans are like, 
those Goramites are fucking heathens. How dare you say that he's a fucking orc? That's blasphemy. Let's fight. And Gorum's like, fight? Cool. You guys are both awesome. Love you. And yeah, then there's... there's the half-orcs who also claim him. <laughs> yeah, he... The Dromar. Basically, basically right after the uh, the quest for Sky. When, when the dwarfs came up, mm -hmm. came up from, came up to the surface, they were followed by, by the orcs. And then, um, the dwarves basically claimed their territory and the orcs who didn't have any territory to claim basically fought against the humans to try to claim territory. And there, and therein lies the conflict. And all of a sudden, poof, here, here's Gorham. He's like it's a pure of, manifestation of conflict, the idea. Yep, basically, basically, which is the personification awesome. of war. The personification of war itself. And and the the cool thing about Gorum, which we'll get into this later, because he doesn't exist in the Pact worlds, but they specifically say that he, Gorum priests believe that he's ever present, that no matter. No matter the advancements in magic or technology or whatever tools of war, war and conflict are always going to exist. That that war and conflict are a constant, and so for yeah. that reason, Gorum is always just a constant. And yet, there is no Gorum in the Pact worlds. I mean, not that you know of. There's a true. probably a spiky ball of hate somewhere in space. True, <laughs> that's true. He he is not one of like, the. He's not. He might, one of the, he might just be hanging out on Galarian. Wherever they that also say is. Robogug disappeared, but like the cult of the Devourer still exists. Right, he's not. He's not listed among the core or the lesser deities. Put well, it because that now, why would he grant spells? You have a gun. <laughs> yeah. So, I love um, that he, so he's, he's spiky, and if you, he's also, so the other thing, because he's, he's war, but the other big thing that he is, is metal, like, specifically mm -hmm. iron, but also metal, and so, like, he has a weird relationship with rust, uh, in the sense that, like, rust, if you see rust on a gore, like, Rust is really bad, but he also, like, that's, like, his, like, curse, is he, like, rusts you in multiple different ways, both, like, mm -hmm. literally by rusting your armor and shit, but also, like, making you as a person shittier and rusting you. But, like, looking rusty is important as long as the rust is actually blood that is oxidized on your armor, but, like, it feels like that, like, does blood rust iron? I don't know. I haven't killed enough people to figure that out. I... I'm not sure. Couldn't tell you. I'll make sure to wear armor next but, time. But we will. <laughs> yes. But we'll put a it we'll does. put a pin in. Thanks. We'll Corey. put a pin in that conversation about Rust because we'll we'll get into that a little later when we talk about Rust Henge, the adventure. <laughs> a little. Because Gorum Gorum does play a fairly significant part. I mean, quite literally, a third of that book. So. Yeah, we'll get into that. But even though he is the personification of war and conflict, he, like Corey mentioned, he does not condone the slaughter of innocents nor the slaughter of invalids. He, in fact, he considers that just more, more along the the ties of being a murderer and a butcher. He specifically not, hates murder and not being a warrior. Like, I think the only reason he tolerates death in general is because it's inevitable if you're if you're covered in spikes and like to punch people a lot. But like, Goramites do not try to kill people. Like, that's not their thing. Because if you kill someone, then the fight stops. Right. And you can't continue fighting if they're dead. That sucks. You gotta keep them alive so you can keep fighting them. Surrender is fine. Retreat is fine. Right, yeah, exactly. You can, it's, you can tactical retreat. You can surrender knowing that you'll live to fight another day. Fleeing is specifically different 
than surrendering or retreating because fleeing is the intention of running away to survive retreating is running away to fight again yep yeah and, and specifically fleeing is running away because you are scared to die in combat and also he is he's okay with 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 killing someone if they are intentionally trying to mislead you and they sp specifically give an example of someone who is pretending to surrender in the hopes of striking you down while you are unaware that is worthy because they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes and that's dishonorable there there are very little gorm inquisitors but the gorm inquisitors that do exist focus on killing deserters and specifically killing people that turn on their own teammates so and it, it it says there if you're so if you're an inquisitor and you're in a war and you see someone desert your army you're going to finish your fight and then track them down later and the hunt is all part of the fight and it's all really fun and exhilarating but if you're in a fight and someone turncoats in front of you you immediately have to kill that person <laughs> yeah and uh what was i i had a train of thought and i lost it Oh, and like, a, a lot of the write-up on him is just basic God of War stuff, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's, like, he's cool and he's rad, but there's not much substance. Right. You know, his clerics wear armor, blah blah blah, his clerics fight each other for dominance in the church, blah blah blah. But I did like the section where it talked about his relationships with other deities. Yes, and, that's fun. And it specifically mentioned that he really doesn't care about most of them. Well, it says that he and, has fought against and with basically all of them. But the motherfucker hates Akachek and... Nordmash. Nordgerber. And well, Lamashtu. No. Everybody no, hates Lamashtu. No, 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 no. He is indifferent to Lamashtu. Lamashtu likes him. No, it's Ergothoa he hates. It's Ergothoa Erg he hates. Well, no, Ergothoa, he, Ergothoa likes to specifically fuck with him. So he's like, I'm gonna, he, but the thing is, he also views Phirasma the same as he views Ergothoa, where he's like, both of you are on my shit list, and I am this close to fucking your day up. And it's Ergothoa, it's because... So, er, okay, so let's just get into this. Because, this, because this poison. It's so Ergothoa, her whole thing is she likes to find out what your what your like your like pet peeve is, and then she's going to fucking amplify and be like, I'm going to piss you. If, if you don't like it when I leave milk out on the counter and not on the fridge, I'm going to leave the milk out every single fucking day. Like, she's just going to do that. And so when she found out that Goramites, like, they like a death in battle. If you're going to die, you might as well die in battle. But, like, death and murder are not part of the religion like death and murder are not aspects of gorm's faith so she's like okay so i'm gonna have my followers pretend to be goramites and they're gonna poison their shit with like the longest acting poison you can and it will disease them with like blood veil or COVID or some shit and so i'm gonna fight them i don't care if i win or lose i'm just gonna fight them and i'm gonna nick them and then they're gonna die of cancer and that's just gonna suck for him and no, gorm's like no. Ergotho, if you do this again, I'm gonna fucking come to your house and I'm gonna shit all over your couch. Like, I'm gonna kick your ass. And Ergotho was like, what? And not only that, she's she also fucking relishes in tempting his soldiers with gluttony and just, like, finding the one thing that they fucking love and just giving them plenty. Like, dude, you like donuts? Well, here. You're just going to come on over, and all of a sudden, you're going to have six dozen donuts just waiting on the table. Oh, yeah, that's free. You can go ahead and eat them. And then next thing you know, dude, you've gained 300 pounds, and you can't fight anymore. Also, she likes to res his followers, like, resurrect them as zombies and shit, which, is, I mean, is always disrespectful, and for Gorm, it's no different. Like, he is not a fan of necromancy, because he's like, what are you doing? Stop fucking with his body. He's already dead. Stop it. What are you... That's weird, and I don't like it. I'm gonna kick your ass. Though, so interestingly enough, so I I started with uh, the Kingmaker Rite of Gorum, which 
I know he's in Legacy of Fire. He's got it right up there too. But this one, uh, it's one of like the earlier ones that I remember. And it only mentions his relationship with Phrasma. And he also has Phrasma on his shit list because he, for whenever there's war, Phrasma sends her little psychopomps to go down and like collect the souls and you know do the whole like Valkyrie shit and like usher the souls to the boneyard and all this stuff. Um, and he's like, stop it. Death and murder are not part of my religion. Get out of my fight, Phrasma. This is not your place to be. And Phrasma's like, dude, this is my job. And Gorham's like, I don't care. I don't want your fucking death stink all over my fucking battlefield. And so he keeps, in this one, it's like, he's very close to issuing all of his followers to just start popping over Phrasma uh, temples just to tell her, like, to fuck off. And Phrasma is like, what am I going to do? like bar his fucking uh, uh, followers entry to Elysium then the boneyard is filled with a bunch of fucking angry Goromites who just want to break everything and I can't have that so she's like I don't know what to do like I'm doing my job and he's pissed but if I let him do I, I can't punish him because then it fucks me and I can't do my job like what do I do <laughs> the one thing the one thing as I was reading that section too that, that got me that got me laughing was Dude's buddy buddy with with Corey. With uh Besmara over here. Yeah. Dude dude mm-hmm. fucking loves Besmara. He's like her strength, her her devotion to battle. They both love the excitement and struggle of war and conflict and It's about the journey, though, not the destination. Even though yeah, even though Besmara's reasoning behind war and conflict is vastly different than than Gorham's. She wants to loot and plunder. He just wants the thrill of battle. I believe so we're talking on like Corey mentioned earlier that he has his his deific realm is not named. It's basically just an open battlefield, but it has a giant fucking castle cathedral temple thing there. It's like a siege temple and it doesn't matter if it gets destroyed, it comes back up the next day so you can siege it again tomorrow. And if I'm remembering correctly, Caden Kalian often, like, his followers go in there just to, like, do some shenanigans and fight and come back, which Gorham's cool with because he's like, fighting is fighting, I don't give a shit. But it mentions that Caden Kalian, he doesn't like that Caden Kalian fights to brag about it because he's like, don't fight for a reason, just fight. Don't fight so that you can go to the bar and talk about it, just fight. <laughs> yeah, because because Caden's, Caden, the Cadenite heaven, or It's like afterlife. next door. It's right next door, and that's also just a battlefield where they can try to find out who the, who the most badass is, and then, that, then they can go back into the hall and brag about it. Yeah, that's where Gorm said, that's where you lost me. You should just keep fighting. The whole stopping the fight part, I don't get that. I don't understand. You just gotta keep fighting. The only reason you stop fighting is so you can rest, so you can fight tomorrow. That's a never-ending royal rumble. Well, it's fun, too, because <laughs> Gorm is, like, he's not stupid, either. Like, he's not, like, just a, like, Robogug no. is just, like, destruction incarnate, and, like, is somewhat in... In, like in, I don't know, mildly intelligent, but like it's just destruction. Where Gorum is like intelligence is important. You need it to outsmart your enemy. If you are stupid, you just have to get bigger so you can compensate for your stupidity. But if you're not very big, you better be fucking smart so you can bring down the big guy. Right. And like there's a weird line, like there's a fine line between what is cowardly and what is not. So like fleeing is bad, and like underhanded tactics is bad, and but guerrilla tactics is fine. Sneaking is fine. Stealth is fine. Like, using your strengths to battle is fine. But, like, like assassination, not fine. Poisoning, not fine. Poisoning, not fine. <laughs> yeah, like, spells to enhance yourself. Awesome. <clears throat> spells to, like, debuff your enemy, not cool. Like, even, like, attack spells, he's like, nah, don't. It, use a sword. Like, I'd rather you not. 
Yeah, if you can, oh, well, but you can enhance my sword. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I would rather you cast flaming weapon than fireball, and it's like, but fireball, look at all these d6s. I don't give a shit. Look at this d12. Ha ha! Bigger dice. Oh, can we talk he about his the cross of gods? Can we talk a little bit about his boons and curses? Because those they're so fun. Yeah. So he has a... his his uh, what is it? His obedience. Which is, they don't have obediences in 2nd edition, but in 1st edition, if you want to do an obedience to, the, to Gorum, you basically, uh, where the fuck is it, you, you sing a little song about how cool Gorum is and how you're going to fight shit, and then you get down on one knee, and you, you like, stab the ground, and then you finish stabbing the ground, uh, where the fuck, okay, here we go, you dress yourself in your heaviest set of armor, you shout your oath of loyalty to Gorum at the top of your lung, punctuated uh, by smashing your weapon against your shield or your body. Uh, you kneel on one knee with your weapon against your shoulder. You recite your bis victories in battle um, in a sonorous voice until your obedience is done. If you're attacked during this, you fight them. And that's it. So you basically just get on one knee and you, and you talk about how cool you are. Uh, which is kind of weird, because there's also this, like, running theme with Gorum that he's very, like, in the now. He's not so much about what happened before. Like, he doesn't really care about why or what happened before this. And he's not super concerned about the future. He just wants to live in the now, because now is when the fight is. That's... That's pretty zen of him, at least. Like, he's not a... He's... You know, he's not a dummy. But, yeah, so I'm... let's say you get on your knees and you, you shout these, because he also, like, we'll talk about Holy Text later, but he, you shout some poetry, which I also thought was kind of fun, uh, that right. he's a, surprisingly a poet. And uh, his minor boon in second edition is that if you don't have a weapon on you, you have a weapon on you. If you go to draw a weapon, you just get one. If, it doesn't, nice. if it's down on you, you just got one. His moderate boon is he gives you a great sword if you have a great sword it gets the forceful trait and then his major boon is if you're about to die you just heal uh like freddy krueger or like jason Voorhees. so his curses so his minor curse is your armor and shield get rusted and the ac sucks and your harness sucks the moderate curse is that your weapon die goes down a step so your d12 goes down one and your major curse is as soon as combat starts you get tired become fatigued and slowed. Oof. That sucks. And the slow increases every round. So, if you don't finish the fight in two rounds, you just don't get to act anymore. He just makes you real sleepy. Yeah, that sucks. But here's the that thing. Sucks. If you... So, let's say you got the major curse, and you're in a war with a bunch of Goramites, because a lot of times Goramites just fight other Goramites, because why wouldn't you? And then you become like slowed six, and so you're basically just like in the feudal position on the ground in the middle of the battlefield. No one's going to touch you. Mm -hmm. You'll live with that fight to fight another You'll day. You'll live with your shame. Well, to fight another day and redeem yourself. <laughs> Maybe go you hang out with the Iori boys and do yeah. some push-ups. <laughs> yeah, you'll be shamed for it. But yeah, you'll live. The um you did bring you, you brought up the point too about he just he's a, he's very much in the now. Doesn't care about the past, doesn't really care about the future either. To that point, his his faith has no holidays. No. They you would think that they would they would um they would, you know, uh, revere important battles? No. Doesn't give a shit about battles. Even, no, even the important not, ones. He's not without... Like, you should be proud of your accomplishments, though. So, like, part of your, your obedience is you have to recite your victories in battle. Which is weird, because he doesn't like it when Caden does it. But apparently it's okay when he does it. But, like... Well, Caden doesn't win drunk. His followers <laughs> are doing it sober. Caden does everything drunk. That's exactly! That's but 
he like he's like it's important to know what you've done and be proud of your accomplishments and to like use that to fuel yourself so that you can fight better later so it talks about like there are no holidays but like if one day you're like tying your shoes and it reminds you of that time you kicked ass with your shoes untied at that war and you're like man remember two weeks ago when i fucking kicked ass with my shoes untied and then that becomes like a mini holiday for just you specifically yeah until you forget about it and until then you it's forget no about it yeah, again, again, it's staying very much in the present. Like you can. I, I need to take a little of this for my Goromite character. Alex, you know my Goromite character. Do I? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, live in the now. <laughs> Cory plays a small bird uh, that is stuffed with... Stuffed animal. It's stuffed with hate. And, uh... <laughs> uh, just... I thought, like, I thought you were going to say stuffed with steel wool. Yeah, Could be that too. more metal. You should get some more spikes on you. Dude, steel wool. <laughs> yeah, you're stuffed with steel wool. So what's fun is if, you, if you're if you a Goromite, the first thing you got to do is get some metal armor. And it doesn't, it's like, often metal armor will be like warm from the dead body on the battlefield. Because it's like, I don't care if it's shitty or not, I'll upgrade it later. But I need some kind of metal on me. And then a lot of Goromites take chunks of metal and just add spikes like, I keep talking about the spikes. It's You're supposed to spike yourself up like it's the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, like the, pretty much. The picture of one in, in the book, it's just like, it looks like a woman in black armor who just put a bunch of, like, yellow knives all over herself. She looks like... <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, there she is. So, I'm, there's just spikes everywhere. She looks like like a kitchen cupboard fell on her and everything got she got tarred and feathered with cutlery like it's just spikes upon spikes yeah i mean they even mentioned here that like at his temples and shrines the priests they they stockpile weapons and armor that they've harvested from the dead and they've they've they've, they've cleaned it obviously they made it battle ready but they ha they don't bother recording what, where the armor came from, or when it came into the, came into the um, into the rack. Does doesn't matter where, when. It's just they don't bother doing any kind of record. It's just, hey, they'll harvest the armor, they'll harvest the weapons, they'll clean them, get them battle ready, and just put them there in storage, and that's about it. It's important that you maintain your armor. That's important mm -hmm. because again, he abhors rust. And I also like that their altars are basically just a big rock that they stab a sword into King Arthur style to replicate the holy, like the holy symbol. And it's like, there, that's our altar. Yep. Where, and where they have, and there are two, but more like one and a half holy texts of Gorum. The first one isn't really a holy text. It's just seven heroic poems called the Gorum Skagit. And there, <laughs> it talks about how they they each have a specific cadence and they're all very rhythmic percussion heavy poems so you can like chant them in a battlefield and like like drum with your feet and stuff and to march, them and march to them yeah but they don't translate well in other languages so it's like it says specifically in elven and orisiani it's very awkward to chant them <laughs> which i just think is really funny yeah because I, I doubt elves worship Gorum. <laughs> and then not the very other, many, I would imagine. I mean, because they're just not metal enough. The other, and I'm using finger air quotes here, holy text, is uh, there's a dude, uh, like a barbarian Goromite priest dude in, I think, the land of the Linorm Kings or the Mammoth Lord, way up there in North. And he uh, has a, like, a record of important Goromite victories and stuff that he's been chronicling. But as we discussed, that's not really Gorham's thing. So most Goromites think of that holy text as heresy because they're like, why are you writing this shit down? You should be fighting. Right. Just just remember it. And if it just comes up... Just remember it. Yeah. If it if comes it, up, it comes up. Why are you not fighting right the now? It is not mightier than the sword, nerd. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> 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 so Say that to face. 
similar to last time I was here, we talked about Caden Kalian, though much better because Caden Kalian has his religion as a religion has zero structure whatsoever. It just it almost doesn't exist. Gorum is better, but uh, also it's like not, not by fight. much. You fight like they they have captains, chiefs, like chieftains, priests, holy men, and stuff. But none of those titles actually mean anything. It's whoever fight good and whoever fight the most and fight bestest, they are the one in charge. Yeah, it's basically Sir Captain Commander. Yeah, pretty much. But at that point, though, they do, like, they... Gorum seems to... It's said that Gorum is seen every time you're in battle, you can see him in your periphery. And he seems to actively speak to his followers more. Like, we're talking about his relationship with other gods. It mentions when I say, like, Urgothoa and Phrasma are on his shit list. He has, like, he's like, I will tell my followers to go to your temples and knock shit over. Like, he is more active in his faith than, like, Caden is, where he will actively influence his followers to go to war. Yeah, and that's, that's a good point that you brought up, because one of my favorite things is... How does he how does he interact with his faithful? And they say here, and this is again one of the most fucking metal things that I've read, is that he likes to uh, basically show up and show his favor on his on warriors that he's given the thumbs up to by having that warrior leave a trail of blood and viscera behind them. Yes. And and it's sometimes, so metal. and sometimes, like they, the the legend says that sometimes, some of his favorite warriors, what well, what'll happen is they'll come upon like a band of brigands, that uh, where that one lone warrior is vastly outnumbered, and and yet that lone warrior will survive the battle because his enemies somehow have found themselves slipping and sliding and tumbling on the blood slick uh, bodies and and the road just from from the trail that that lone warrior's left behind them. Mm -hmm. Talk about a perfect backstory for someone who wants to play a Goromite, like a, just a Goromite in general. Like I was I was Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I was a little merchant and then I got attacked by, by brigands, and then my fucking sword started bleeding, and it, and as I swung my sword, it fucking blinded the brigands, and they fell everywhere, and I gave them hep C, because the blood got in their mouths, and, and now, and because Gorm thought I was so cool, now I think he's the coolest, and I'm gonna devote my life to him, because he saved me from those bandits by showing me how to fight good. Like, it, <laughs> it writes itself. Yeah, it's so fucking cool. Think I can convince Indy to give Buttons a forever blood trail? <laughs> I mean, you you kind of do that anyways. Like without the, the the magic stuff, you just kill a lot of things. On, on the on the flip side of that coin, and Alex has kind of mentioned this: how he how he shows his followers that he's pissed off at you. The most common way is all of a sudden you'll see a patch of rust show up on your most valued weapon or piece of armor. And he your shit. He, he's also been known to punish his, the most cowardly warriors by just having the armor completely fall apart in the middle of battle. Like, in the middle of battle, all of a sudden what will happen is your armor will just completely fall apart into a heap of rust. Like, right as that enemy is swinging its sword down right at you, oh shit, your armor's gone. Sucks to suck. Maybe don't be Kraven. Not the Spider-Man villain. <laughs> I mean... The adjective. I mean... Don't be Kraven either. <laughs> that movie doesn't look great. Uh, <laughs> anyways... What I think is fun, too, is if you have your armor itself rust, that is enough to piss him off. 
So it's like if you disrespect metal and you let it go bad, then he will make it way worse and like do everything that he hates. He's kind of hypocritical. As is befitting a god of his station. Yeah, we're, we're I'm finding out that it? that's that's a lot of that's a that's a lot of the gods, to be honest. That's true. Yeah. None of them really stay in their own lane. Except Lamashtu. She just wants to birth monsters. Yeah, I, so I forgot to mention. So Lamashtu actually, so he what is indifferent to Lamashtu, but Lamashtu likes him because, as we mentioned before, Gorham is a fan of procreation because it creates more warriors. He's also a fan of procreation in which the man is the primary caregiver and the woman goes out because he's like, I don't care about gender politics. If the woman is the better fighter and the man needs to take care of the baby so the baby can be a good fighter, whatever, I don't care, sure. And Lamashtu's like, good for you, Gorham. Good for you. Proud of you, buddy. <laughs> On that note, too, he fucking hates Norgerber. He we hates kind of Norgerber. We, we, I mean, you can kind of guess because Norgerber is the god of assassins and poisoners. You got Blackfinger. I mean... <clears throat> he respects Serziel, the horseman of the horseman of war. He I sees mean, him more like a rival, though, because he's like, yeah. "You do war because you like like the the oblivion of it all." I like you don't seem like you like the fighting part of it. Like he's about the journey, not the destination. Where the like the horseman of the of war is like, "I want to fucking kill people." <laughs> yep. I mean, again, it's 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 a, it's a respect, but it's more of a rivalry respect. Yeah, like he's the better god of war, obviously. Nathus don't, don't he, like him. Doesn't like him. He doesn't like him, but that's also like he that's also kind of a rivalry respect because he's like, I kind of appreciate that you kind of also focus on your one thing and you really double down on it like I do, but I don't like how you have so much magic. <laughs> and Just how, stop like, with the magic. Yeah, the magic's weird, man. Like, I like half of you. Like, the, 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 the half of you that's all about, like, destruction. That's a cool half. <laughs> the other half, not so much. He liked it when he was, like, almost easy Avenge Sevenfold and not this, like, weird Daft Punk Avenge Sevenfold we get now. He's like, you're like that half. I liked your old half. The half that did, like, like fucking Bat Country. I like that half. Hail to the King half. But oddly enough, he's on... He's on... He's friends. He's buddy buddies with Asmodeus. Well, yeah, Asmodeus is like, Hey, man. And what's funny, so he also... He has such a weird relationship with all the gods because he both fights and also fights with them. And so a lot of times the gods will like conflicts between like if a one god is pissed at another god and they're fighting, Gorm will somehow find himself being involved because he's a like, conflict and he's a like, conflict, conflict, and he'll go to the conflict and he'll pick a side. What side wants me? Yeah. And <laughs> whichever side gets Gorm is often the side that wins. And a lot of times it's like, oh, you got Gorm. All right, I'm not even fighting. And Gorm's like, no, 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 come on, guys. What the Guys, fuck? I brought my sword. It's bleeding and All everything. All of them. All seven of them. You you, you can wield it. Just but don't get it rusted. It's about how, like, if you were to summon his herald, all of his heralds and planar allies are all metal in both the aspect of being metal and also literally metal, like the iron. Uh, but if a lot of times other gods that are fighting with him at any given time will like lend him their planar ally and when they do that that planar ally goes through a metamorphosis and becomes metal that's awesome which is fucking rad like imagine like what what is it the a black butterfly what's the desna one that's like a moth or whatever imagine oh, that yeah. one the the night monarch the yeah. Night, yeah imagine that one being lent to to Gorum for whatever reason and becomes the fucking like metal knight monarch. Or um or razor or, blades for wings. Or Besmara's ship. Just yeah. going in, all of a sudden coming out, just like, 
a fucking uh, battleship. And then just sinks to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> it turns into the Titanic. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, he loves Asmodeus just because Asmodeus often comes up with um, really kick-ass uh, weapons of war. Like, these really effective new ways of waging war. I mean, he's the I Prince of Darkness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, like, that's so that's why also, like, once again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gripe on the fucking alignment, even though that doesn't exist anymore. But, like, the fact that they took chaotic good away and true neutral away, it irks me. Because it's like, he is not about good or evil. He's not about whose side. He's about fighting. And, like, he'll pick a side because that's, you know, like, you gotta pick a side at some point. But a lot of times he'll pick both sides just because then there's more fighting to be had. But, like, mm -hmm. he'll fight on the good side. He'll fight for a righteous cause. And he'll fight for a not righteous cause because anything that involves fighting. And, like, like we've established, like, he's progressive about gender politics because it doesn't matter in relation to fighting. Uh, like, he... He really enjoys it if people like find love and happiness because it makes them better fighters like you can be a worshiper of Gorum and be like I would consider Conan the Barbarian a like a chaotic good worshiper of Gorum the chaotic good is a stretch because he does some fucked up shit in the books but like he is by all intents and purposes the hero of the story and is a overall good guy he's just super violent I but and like that's fine you can be chaotic good and be violent. Right. He's in the fucking Elysium for fuck's sakes. And he, you can't yeah, fight, you can't yeah, be chaotic but, good. But they mention how weird it is that he's in Elysium. Well, they mention it, but like, it's fucking interesting though. Cause they're like, they, no one knows why or how he got there or why he was allowed to be there. But, but there's a ring of stones that have messages from Azada saying thank you. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's thought that he, since he fought on the side of good so much, they were like, you know what, you can hang out here, because you're not actually evil. Oh, look at that, he's not actually evil, he just fights a bunch. He's not gonna Tyler Durden you, he just fights a bunch. Fucking Tyler Durden you. <laughs> Um, do you want to take us through the aphorisms, Corey? Yeah, yeah. So, aphorisms of Gorum. Better to die a warrior than live a coward. Uh, which is, do not run from a battle that you have sought. Cowards flee, warriors retreat. Which is counter to that. Retreat because you believe that you have future victory, not because you fear death. Will you fight? Is just a question that is posed repeatedly to all Goromites by everybody. Clergy, doctors, everybody. An important <laughs> distinction with that, though, is that it's specifically not can you fight, because it's not will. a matter of if, if you can or cannot. Like, you can have a broken leg, and they'll be like, will you fight? And it's like, you're not gonna. You, your leg is broken, but you want to. That's what's important. Yeah. Blood, not rust. Keep your armor clean, but if it is to be dirty, be it from your enemy's blood or your own. Never rust from disuse. And Iron Tongued, which is a descriptor for those who always just say exactly the right thing to piss people off and start fights. What's funny is that he doesn't like diplomacy if it's used to negotiate a fight and to like like make a treaties or stop a fight but he does like diplomacy if it's used to specifically start a fight <laughs> right yeah, I, I love iron tongued as the opposite of silver tongued silver tongued is somebody who can talk their way out of anything iron tongued is dude you're fucking ugly. You're the <laughs> ugliest fucker I've ever seen. Was your mom a hyena? Because you're fucking ugly. Well, I'm half Null, so as a matter of fact, she was. 
<laughs> yeah, kind of a kind of an aphorism, but do you do either of you remember? I think it was two Paisocons ago when they were talking about when they were about to launch um, Advanced Players Guide. They were talking well, that would about have been more than two. What was it? Yeah, three now, maybe four. Four. I don't remember. But they were about to launch Advanced Players Guide, and they were talking about how orcs are going to be a playable ancestry. And I forgot who it was. I forgot who it was, and it was at one of the panels for um, the Advanced Players Guide. And they were talking about orcs, and one of the developers was talking about how orcs are their favorite ancestry. And one of the questions was like what's your favorite thing about orcs and the developer said something along the lines of when I play an orc one of my favorite things to say is go ahead and try to kill me because if I die that's that's fine because this gives me a chance to go and face and try to kill Gorham in the afterlife and I always thought that was fucking badass yeah, if uh, Goramite to die in battle is a great honor. Like, despite the fact that death and murder are not part of his religion, if you're gonna die, you got that's how you're gonna do it. And I mean, realistically, that's how you're gonna do it. Yeah. Unless you fucking fight an Urgothoan and then you're gonna get cancer or something. Or, yeah. Or just just don't die and have a. And follow that cycle pomp. Well, the, it's Just funny because they, it. Goramites don't believe in old age. Which it's like, what do you mean you don't believe in old age? But they're like, no, you you live to fight. And then you, when you because it's probably because most Goramites don't live to old age. No, <laughs> so what I think it's funny about the aphorisms is that it's like they talk about you shouldn't be a coward. Being a coward is bad. Goramites also see there as two types of people in this wor world. Cowards and not cowards. So it's either you are or are not a coward. And if you are, it's, so it's like fight or not fight. Are you fighting me currently? Coward? Nice. I think all that's left to talk about are the actual planar allies, right? And then we can go on to talk about Rust Pen? I think. Yeah. yeah. The planar allies aren't. They're honestly they're kind of the. I wasn't super impressed. The main one that has the biggest about him is the first blade, which it's basically it's essentially a golem. It was a piece of Gorm's either armor or weapon or something that while he was fighting an otherworldly god from an outside sphere, which I can only assume to be like some fucking great old one or some shit, which he killed. A piece of his armor and or shield and or weapon and or both cracked off and then became this. And it's basically just a golem of fighting that just walks around and beats up shit. Interesting. No, okay, so what's fun though is that it has the approximate size and shape of an iron golem. It's about 15 feet tall. An important distinction about Gorum is whenever Gorum is, uh, is around, he is always the tallest person in the room, even if there are giants. So if you're in a room with giants, he and he shows up, he will be taller than all those giants. If you're in a room of halflings, he's going to be maybe five feet tall. Yeah. Well, if you are a halfling in a room of halflings, he'll, he'll maybe be three and a half feet. <laughs> I just think it'd be funny, though. Yeah. Like, imagine if all the gods were, like, talking... And, like, let's just assume that all the gods are, like, medium-sized when they're in their deific realm for whatever reason. And they're all just talking, and Gorm's there. And then one giant shows up. Gorm, uh, and he just, like, he need truck and get bigger. And then, so it's just this really, like, because he can't be the shortest guy in the room. He just can't. <laughs> He's that insecure. <laughs> <laughs> like you like you go into like the god bathroom and there's all these stalls and then like one god walks in and then Gorm's like oh and then all of a sudden the stall is like Kah! like I had to be bigger than you fuck you Belondar 
<laughs> among the other among the other um, allies, there's Silver Saint Fang. Oh, Saint Fang is, is cool. An unusual creature that resembles a silver dragon, except they're covered in spikes. Again, this and whole like the nine- the silver is closer in color to ire. Yeah, yeah. They're covered in spikes. They're more of a dark gray, like kind of that um that like tempered iron color rather than that like bright silver that like really shiny silver that most uh, silver dragons are. There are patches of like the rust all along but it's not rust. But- their scale, but yeah, they're they're just blemishes. They're they're blemishes. They're old stains. From because blood stains be, from previous previous battles. Yeah, because uh, Saint Fang has has a habit of uh, taking the blood of their victims and uh, painting his scales with them. That's you fucking do. metal as shit. Yeah. It's pretty metal. Yeah. And none of this Nightwish melodic metal shit. This is like fucking Slayer, like fucking Children of Bodom, speed metal, death metal, fucking black metal, straight from Norway. Can't understand a word of what they're saying because it's just screaming. Lots of blast beats. Man, I want to go And then they're, to speaking of metal, there's Bloody Hands. Which is a metal as fuck name. His description is slightly less metal. Because he's shaped like a Hezru demon. Which is a giant, giant frog. Yeah, yeah. Giant fucking hunchback frog. And. But he's. His skin is blood red. So he's basically Zaba from the, from the show. Well, also, it's his skin. Is tech is more akin to metal than frog skin. Yeah. It's because Gorum. Because it's Gorum, because it has to be. And then last but not least is Temperbrand, who is a fire elemental. But get this! He's a fire elemental that has the appearance of superheated liquid metal. Surprise, surprise. Because Gorum. Mm-hmm. Not exactly a planar ally, but there is one final creature associated with Gorum, and that's the Zen- Zentractid, which are essentially they're they're servitors of Gorum, and they're basically just spiky ironclad bears. Like it's, it's oh, that's awesome. It is a ferocious ursine brute that has blades like metallic teeth and appears to be covered in overlapping plates. It's only a CR four creature, um, but it's. It's just, it's a bear in plate mail. That's all it is. That's Which, like, awesome. imagine, like, I live in bear country. There are bears in my backyard all the time. If a bear came at me covered in spikes, I would shit my pants. There's no tactical retreat. <laughs> Sorry, Gorham, I am fucking running. <laughs> That's awesome. I am pissing myself and running away. Yeah, spiky bear, no thank you. (laughs) So yeah, I guess the TLDR of this all is that Gorum, super progressive about most uh, gender politics and marriage politics, as long as you fight. He's Doesn't very give a zen. Shit. He's very about living in the now, not dwelling on the past, and not thinking too hard about the future. He's a very zen dude. He's all about as long as living in the now is involves fighting. fighting. Uh, he also believes in you know working with your strengths and using uh, acknowledging your weaknesses and downsides and uh, compensating for them, so you can fight better. He like. He's got a lot going, like, as far as a religion goes, like, he's a lot more to him than, like, Caden Kaley and this, and, like, even a couple other guys, like, I can't think of on the top of my head at the moment, but, like, they're, without being super preachy, like, he's got a lot going on to him. 
Like, he's not an overall bad dude. He's not an evil deity. He doesn't have schemes. He thinks schemes are stupid. Anytime you're talk a deity is talking to him, he thinks it's it's wasting his time. He thinks it's beneath him because all he cares about is fighting. Which, as a player, if you were to use Gorum as your springboard to be like, I'm going to be a Goromite worshiper, that gives you a lot of things to like use. I feel like it'd be very easy to play a Goromite without like I mean Corey's playing one right now because you basically can just go with the flow like you don't have to worry about like who your like your allies are whoever your allies are you don't have to be a stick in the mud about whatever but you also don't have to be the biggest douche like if you were a worshiper of Robogug you would have to be a douche like you wouldn't be able you can't be a player character and be a worshiper of Robogug you just don't play well with others like it doesn't work Gorum is like break shit. Yeah, you have to. Everything you do has to function to be counterproductive. Like you has to be. That's the whole religion is counterproduction. Where Gorum, it's about fighting, which is a lot easier and more tangible to do, especially in a game where a fifty percent of it is whacking things with sticks and shooting spells. Though, yeah. also speaking of sticks, he doesn't like non-metal weapons. If you use a like a baton or nunchucks or uh, a whip. He's like, Fuck get out of the here with this irory bullshit. Grab a fucking sword, you pussy. Pretty if much. Gonna, if you're gonna use a whip, make it at least a spike chain. Come on. Has to be metal and spiky. But yeah, that's that's about it for us. Next month, next month we got a big one. Ne I know this this episode was fairly short. There's not like we said. There's not a whole lot to Gorum. But don't worry about it, because next month we are more, way more than going to make up for it. We're going to come at you with a super girthy episode next month. Please don't use that word when talking about the deity we're talking about next month. <laughs> Girth with uh, three C's. Um, next month we are going to be talking about Abadar. Hell yeah, and, boy. And not, on, not only are we going to have the full three hosts, Corey, myself, and Mike will be here. We're going to be joined by Alex, who will be who will be joining us again. Yeah, three P. And, and Heath is coming back because Heath is the one who chose this god, and he wants to talk about it. So we are going to be talk devoting half the episode to Abadar and Galarian, and then the other half of the episode will be devoted to Abadar and the Pact Worlds. And then probably another entire chunk to Abadar in the APs, because he's been in more than a couple APs. He was yeah. huge in Curse of the Crimson Throne. And yeah, yeah, he's been in a couple. So yeah, and there's I been a couple, you, couple yeah. of a Starfinder APs as well. So you reminded me and we can't we can't go to spoiler corner yet because we forgot one of the segments. And it's been a while because Heath isn't here. But uh, how is Gorum like the Green Bay Packers? And I'll start. <laughs> One, fight, fight, question mark, explanation point, explanation point. Two, likes the color green. Three, loves procreation. Four, fight, explanation point, explanation point. Five, can't win. <laughs> I'm concerned with winning. Winning is not part of the equation. <laughs> One more Super Bowl. Part than six, the Saints. no murder either, but that's you know. One more Super Bowl than the Saints. Just gonna say that, Heath. I don't know shit about sports. <laughs> You're welcome, Heath. Anyway, <laughs> um, <Fuck>. <laughs> yeah, we've been missing out. How is this god like the Green Bay Packers? We forgot that for a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I'm sure Heath will come come at us with uh, more than. Then enough reasons of why um, why Avatar's Avatar. Like I need to come up with him with why why Avatar's oh, like this. Also, before we go, by the time you listen to this, more gods will be on the safe list. But yes. as of the time of recording, right now, two of the gods that we have already covered have been declared safe from God's reign, and that is Phrasma and Asmodeus. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the time yeah. you listen to this, there will be at least two more. 
I think by Warp the time this is pretty safe to say he's public. safe. I don't know, actually. He's like, fairly replaceable. Yeah, but like, why would you though? Like, what's what do what does Paizo gain from kill? And also in a in a uh, AP called War of the Immortals to kill the war guy. Like, he's gonna be there for sure. But like, of course he's gonna like, be there. I mean, it's, there's fighting. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it, his name is in the title. But like, is why what would killing Gorm really do? Like, like, why would you give it, like, oh, you killed the god of war, so I guess we can't fight anymore? Like, oh, who cares? Like, killing him serves no purpose. It's easy to do, but why? Why would you? Like, who cares? Yeah, 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 you have a point. Like, I think, I, like, as I don't think he'll be of, one of the ten declared safe. I, I still think probably not. I still think my choice is still gonna make gonna be the one that makes it, so we'll see. Uh, my time, choice got eliminated this week. I my I mean like I said last time I was here, if you if I was Daddy Paizo, I would kill Caden immediately. But I don't think he's going anywhere. I would be willing to actually put my money on Iomide. That's I think that, she that's might my, fight it. That's my choice. Yeah. Because I that's feel like that, like, as opposed to Gorum, like, if you kill Gorum, who cares? If you kill Iomide, every, like, Cory would care. Right? Well, like, not that, only, that's not a only fucking that. story, right? Like, not, that, not that only, matters. Not only that, she's the inheritor. She inherited all of Aridin's worshippers. So th those worshippers have lost two of their deities now. <laughs> well, like, think about we just talked about how this episode was smaller because there's not a lot they've really done with Gorum. We're going to talk about Rust Hinge and like he's he's there a lot, but like not him specifically. It's more about his followers than about him. Well, I, I don't know. We'll talk about it in spoiler corner. But like I as far as the Pathfinder gods go, the ones that people have more connection with are like your Iomides, your Abadars, your Caden Kalians, your Ergothoas, your, uh, your, um, ah, fucking, uh, Saren Raids, like, the ones Desnas. that they use all the time, your Desnas, like, the ones that people are like, oh man, I like Desna because I played in, uh, Feast of Ravenmore, and I played in Sandpoint, and I, like, they use it all the time. Gorum, it's like, yeah, whatever, like, Gorum is, he's, he's in, Legacy of Fire because war. He's in war for the uh, war of River Kings and Kingmaker because war. But like, no one ever actively uses him because what would he do? All he does is fight. We're like Iomide. Like I'm playing in Wrath right now, so no spoilers. Uh, but I'm imagining she's pretty fucking important at some point. A little bit. A little bit. Just so a tiny like, smidge. And I mean, there's a lot of people that have played both the game and also the AP. So like, they have a personal connection with Iomide because she actually did something. Gorm's never done anything. Like they they casually reference that he may or may not have killed the fucking Lovecraft God. Like what the? F you just say like, oh, in the outer spheres. What is the outer spheres? Yeah. Wh which like, which mean, one of the which one of the elder gods did he kill? No, it just like, says he killed an unnamed god when he yeah. was out in the outer spheres. I know, which, like, like that's that's the rhetorical question. It's like, wait, who did he kill? Yeah, and which one of them like ripped off his armor and or weapon and or piece of him? Like, wait, hold on, you're just gonna just like let that casually walk by, right by us, dude? It's about the journey, not the destination. Don't dwell on the past. You gotta live in the now because that's when we're fighting. <laughs> So I, I, I'm willing to bet that Gorum is gonna probably be safe. Though so I, if he doesn't show up in this AP, like what? Why did why even have him then? You might as well just kill him <laughs> if he doesn't show up in this AP. Like the only reason I would accept him not showing up is if you did actually kill him. And then yeah, he shows I, up because he gets rained on. The I also don't play. Like I know it's like oh like. You know, one of the gods is gonna die, and like gods are, but like I don't even think you can kill him. And I know like the gods are dying and whatever, but like he's he he didn't like he wasn't one of the first beings to be born. He's a manifestation of conflict. He didn't touch the star stone. He did. He is post Robogug, so he's not like a, a like a, a primordial cosmic being. He just 
is conflict personified. Like, how do you how do you stop that? Yeah. It's, it's foundational it, to it, existence. It's, it's almost like it's almost like dream from Sandman. Like yeah, exactly. how do you how do you stop like just like um what's the word I'm thinking of here? Like a concept. Yeah, a concept. Yeah. Like you I mean no, I mean Sandman though, like there is a large portion of that where he did literally stop dream for like thirty years at the beginning of the story. And that yeah. did kind of fuck everything. Fuck but like everything up. It's yeah. more like, how do you kill death? Because if you kill death, doesn't that mean that death still exists? Right? It's the same thing. Like, how do you stop conflict? If you did, that means that no one would ever have any disputes ever. Which doesn't sound like a very fun TTRPG, if I'm being honest. <laughs> All right. Before, before we move on to spoiler corner, let's do our quick outros. Where can we find everybody at? Alex? I don't know. <laughs> Fuck, man. Uh, I'm on, on Twitter at thrash underscore capital N underscore trash. I don't ever post things on Twitter. Uh, I'm around various discords. But I, I, I'm mostly in like the bushes behind the, the Burger King in your local neighborhood. Mm. Yeah. And that weird I... taste in your mouth. That's me usually. I try. I try to throw him some uh, chicken fries every now and then, but fucking, I I hate Kirker Bing, but those chicken fries, man. Oh, uh, Corey. You can find me here uh, on Dubious Knowledge every month, talking about various Galarian deities. Uh, you can also find me on Fifty North, the Goblin Podcast, which we are recording a new episode this weekend. Yeah, yeah, we'll have more 50 North for you soon. More goblin shenanigans. Woohoo! Yeah. And then you can find my writing at three time Eisner winning uh, womenwriteaboutcomics.com. And then, of course, various Paizo affiliated discords, uh, including the 25 North Discord and all of the, uh, the friends of the show discords, like Min Maxed and HLP. Yeah, and as we're recording this, we just had a Besmara cold open for this um, just today. So Yeah, you can also hear me as good old yeah. Bezzy. Yes, yes, yes. And you know who I am. If you're here, you know who I am. And hopefully you're enjoying the show. So Yeah, you're yeah, Jason from What Do You Do Pods. <laughs> no, he... We will have him back on, too, at some point. But yeah, Rusthenge. So, spoiler corner, we're going to be talking about Rusthenge, which is the level one through four... I wouldn't say beginner adventure, but kind of the replacement for Plaguestone. As, like, yeah. the deluxe adventure that you want to start off with, but you don't want to run the beginner box. Yeah. Plaguestone so, really fucked up a lot of things. Yeah, I think a lot of that is Bowman had to write Plague Stone with with the rules only being half baked. Mm -hmm. So I would even argue that Plague Stone, like as a plot, isn't that interesting. Like I, I was, I had a lot of fun because it was the first time playing Tui, but it was like I was like, oh, what did we even? What was this even about? Like, what? What's the point? What's the story here? Oh, there's an angry alchemist. It's okay. Cool, I guess. Yeah, I mean, her mom got kicked out of the town because... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> We're not talking about Plague Stone. We're talking about Rusthenge. Which, in and of itself, is... Seems... Honestly. Honestly. Seems like a, an adventure where you're biting off way more than you should be able to chew at level one. You're talking... Like We're talking about... shit. Yeah, we're talking about the grandson, and again, we're spoiler here, the grandson of an old Thessalonian who got killed way back in the day before Zendarosol got time-stopped. His grandfather got killed, 
And then when New Thassalon came into being, he was time stopped. So in his mind, his grandfather just died. And he's going out to find out what happened to his granddad. Only to find out that, hey, his granddad died so long ago, like eons ago. And he decides upon himself to take about his granddad's uh, mission, which was to resurrect the demon lord of rust who he was commissioned by Bella Marius to she thought was to study star metals he was actually using it for his own nefarious purposes that was to study the horn of rust and to find out to develop a ritual to resurrect the demon lord of rust now, what it turns out is that in during those eons where um, between Zinadarasil and New Thassalon being time-stopped, um, what, what came about was a town called Iron Harbor, which, as the name suggests, is a town that was founded by Goramites. Which that so, is the fucking most interesting part of the module in my opinion like how do you like this is a town that central religion is fighting <laughs> yeah and they they have a monastery to Gorham which is basically a fortress called Stonehome and the PCs are basically sent to Iron Harbor because what they the hook here is that they're from another a a a sister town on the opposite side of the bay called Osprey Cove and and Osprey Cove and Iron Harbor are kind of rival towns or they're, they're at odds um, they were each founded by brothers one worshiped Gorham the other worshiped Caden and so they're they're rival towns and what what happens is a a Goramite shows up in Osprey, Har uh, in Osprey Cove one day, and dude is dying of rust, like has a disease that is making his skin literally rust. Like his skin is rusting, and dude dies in the middle of the town square. So the PCs go to Iron Harbor to say, hey, we found one of your Gormite acolytes just died. What's going on? Do you need help or anything? To only find out that, hey, the entire temple, all the acolytes that worship Gorm, all the Gormites, have been completely fucking decimated by this cult. They've either been decimated or been turned by this cult who want to bring about the Demon Lord of Rust. Which is basically, um, which is basically, uh, that's about it. That's about as much as, uh, Gorm is involved. So yeah, Gorm is not, like, directly in it, but there's a town of Goramites, which, like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah, and what uh, here to me the, the fascinating thing too is we mentioned it a couple times in the in the episode about what happens when you turn coat. Yeah, when you're a Goramite and you turn coat because Gorm half of that. those because half half of those acolytes are they, they, Goramites. They succumb. They decide, hey, you know what, this demon lord dude. He sounds great. Spoiler, that... never side with the Demon Lord. It It's a bad idea. <laughs> it gets you killed by adventurers. I, well, yeah, that happens. That's true. But yeah, so it did, like, I, full disclosure, I haven't read the whole thing. I kind of just skimmed it for the most part. But it's, it's mostly about, like, it brings up uh, that interesting question of, like, this, what happens to this dude, this faith, if it turns. Like, it's about more the faith of Gorum than about Gorum himself. Mm -hmm. Which is why, like, I've talked about, like, 
Gorm has more going on than it looks like at surface level. And this is a testament to that. We're like, what does it take for you to stop being a Goromite? And like, what does that mean? And what happens to you? And like, this is the demon lord of Rust who is antithesis to everything Gorum is. But like, not so much the fighting, the metal part. Right. Right. And it's it's utterly fascinating because you, you, you literally see... And I don't know, like, my PCs, I mean, I've, I, I mentioned it a couple times, but they didn't, they didn't seem to catch on to it. That, like, here are these corrupted acolytes that are all in this, like, rusted-ass armor, and here is this one acolyte who isn't in rusted armor. And yet they still just chose to attack. And I'm like, okay. Sure. Did I mention she's not rusted? <laughs> like that's that's it's a big deal. It's like a whole part of the um, the the um, the adventure, the the concept of rust, and what happens, and like the 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 rusting of faith, like the the aging and decaying of of faith in this town. Um, because as more people come to this town, the the faith of Gorum is not flourishing. A lot of the NPCs that you meet in the town don't worship Gorum. It's 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 an yeah, interesting. Yeah, they all thing. think of Goromites as weirdos. They're like, yeah, exactly. those weird Goromites are over there doing weirdo shit. Exactly. Like and the, the Goromites the, the are sitting there yelling nerds at them. Yeah, like li- the the literal rusting of the faith. It's 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 a very interesting and very fulfilling adventure to run. I am looking forward to running it in a couple of months after. Oh, you are. Hex is... You are. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it with. Right now, the interested parties are Tyler and Swanee from Minmaxed. Nice. Which is why after tax season is oh gotcha when we're gonna yeah. kick off. And the the theory is we're gonna do Rust Hinge into Seven Dooms. Nice. Um, and, yes, uh, yes, because that there's a couple of items that they specifically mention in Rust Hinge can trigger events in Seven Dooms. No, uh, just... And then, uh, so it's gonna be those two plus one of my players from my Rise of the Rune Lords game is gonna play. Nice. To go return to Sandpoint from 15 years ago, and then uh, I will recruit a couple more, hopefully. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Very, very cool. I think that's everything. Yeah, because I don't think Gorham was really part... Oh, you, you mentioned uh, you wanted to talk about the, the little side quest in Kingmaker. I mean, oh, there's no, not I... even really side quests. It's just... You meet a He's, lot of Gorham barbarians. Yeah, you, you meet a lot of Gorham barbarians, and in the computer game, Amiri is a devout follower of Gorham and shouts, FOR like, GORUM! Like, 800 times a combat. And, like, he is mentioned in... I mean, I haven't read this specific book in a long time, but this is book five of Kingmaker. Like, he's that's where his write-up is. But, like, it's because it's about war. Like that's where the it, it's about, like the war of your of your whatever the fuck. So like, yeah, of course they're gonna talk about Gorum. Yeah, okay. Can't not. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, he's never actually been an active participant in anything, but his faith is often used because it's an easy faith to follow. Yeah, that's not even. He's not even part of War for the Crown either. Well, that kind of war is like a like a cold war. It causes to him because yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's not actual combat. It's all substrate. What do you mean you're going to a dinner party? You should be yeah. punching each other. But With yeah, axes. I'm thinking like like Hell's Rebels and Hell's axes. Vengeance might have been. I mean, that's more Asmodeus, but like Hell's Rebels and Hell's Vengeance could have been. Well, here's the thing. He can show up wherever there's conflict. Like, yeah. Which is every AP. Which is everything. 
and it even calls out in the in his write-ups that like it can be between like a war between two neighboring peasant villages or a war between angels and demons he's there and he treats them equally conflict is conflict yeah yeah that's true all right well um yeah if you if you listeners have any have any more insights or can think of anything else where uh gorum shows up feel free to drop it in the channel and the dubious knowledge channel otherwise if you have any comments or thoughts on gorum feel free to drop them in in the channel we'll more than happy to look those over and chat with you absolutely like we we love to, talking about gods and lore and deities and bullshit um and I'm sure Michael have stuff to add too because he was unfortunately unable to make it because of uh -huh. but yeah we'll be back next month to talk about Avatar so yeah my boy all three of us all three of us plus Heath plus Mike it's gonna be a big be one a full house all right anything else are we 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 out we out all right we're outie Peace. see ya.